And if you can't be with the one you love, honey, love the one you're with. Do do do. Love the one you're with. A do 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 do. Do 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 do. Hey, happy Thanksgiving, everybody! It is the hardest part of the ring, Thanksgiving edition. As we're talking about the Thanksgiving Eve, Wednesday, November twenty fifth, two thousand twenty. WWE NXT Hulu Edition with limited commercial interruption for only $7.99 a month, featuring all your favorite television shows and movies, plus original pro program exclusive to Hulu. Hey, we all have our bad moments, all right? Uh, Hulu, it's TV in the palm of your hand. Okie dokie. No one pays me to say that. If they did, I would have got it right. Oh, I hope you had a good one. I, I had a chicken myself. I bought it at Vons, the, the supermarket chain in California. It's like a Safeway Vons, it's a whole, it's a whole thing, and I got a chicken. It's a bird. It's close enough. I'm a single man. What do you want? Uh, I had to put that baby uh, three o'clock sharp in the microwave for my meal, so it worked out well. I had some pumpkin pie and some deviled egg potato salad, some little rolls that I heated up and put the butter on them. I hope you, I hope you had a good meal as well. And if you're in a part of the world that doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving this Thursday, then um, well. We, we, we eat like pigs, and that's that's it, huh? That's, that's really all we do. Huh? Nothing. Oh, the next day we spend too much money. Oh, okay. Well, see you there. It's not all bad. Okay. <laughs> Sniffle. Hey, let's talk about WWE NXT. We, o we open with the irresistible force meeting the immovable object. It's a happening in here. They're hanging from the rafters. The electricity, you can cut it with a knife as Hulk Hogan slams onto the giant because it's in his signature. And we have uh, Candice LeRae is is entering the ring, and we show Kevin Owens on commentary, and he teases the other guy about wearing makeup, and Owens is not wearing any makeup. Um, he must be a babyface because he was getting his shine on early on. Okay, a little wrestling joke there. And Candice wrestles Ember Moon. Uh, Ember is uh, coming out gimmicks galore. She's got a face paint and a mohawk and the, and the red hair. And she's got a raccoon tail for some reason. I didn't even notice that before. And ripped holes in the jeans. And uh, and then a helmet that she wears for two seconds. And then looks at it. So yeah, she's all gimmick to the gills. And uh, there's interference from this match. Gets 74 stars. There's interference galore. Uh, Indy Hartwell, who used to wear a scream mask, is, is running around and... Dakota Kai and South Dakota Kai and North Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez and Raquel Welch. They, they all j jump on the ring apron, which is the hardest part of the ring. And there's a big distraction. And uh, Candace hits a uh, way better a finisher. It's simple, but they called it the Wicked Stepsister. She just holds Ember's arms and I'm just a little sniffly, sorry, and, uh, and smashes her to the, to the mat there. And it's better. It's vicious. I like it. I like it better. There's a one, two, three. Candace gets the Duke. Like I said, 74 stars. Um, what happens here? Tony Storm turns on Ember Moon. Well, that was early. Tony Storm's been back for like three weeks, and they, they turned her already. I think Io Shirai is going to need another opponent and another babyface, babyface match. For Io, really wouldn't be the best thing, whether Io wins or loses. So, yeah, um, I mean, I see it, but I don't know. I felt like Storm just got here. She could have wrestled all those other women already, you know, and or feuded with and had some high-profile stuff with the others. I don't know. But either way, and then Raquel Gonzalez grabs Ember Moon and does the, the right boob slam. And that, that's what she, I don't know why, but that's what they do. And uh, so Tony Storm is bad, and that's, uh, you know, it's going to be hard for me to boo Tony Storm. I don't think it's going to happen. The Undisputed Era is walking, and they, uh, when they walk, they all walk in, in like a row, which um, is cool for the camera, but it sucks if you're trying to get past the sidewalk in New York City. And the Undisputed Era is very upset, so they cut a promo about how angry they are, and Pat McAfee is not there. I guess he, uh, he said on his podcast he was not going to be there, something, something, something. But clearly, I think he was there later. I don't know the answer to that. Candice LeRae and friends are backstage, and Tony Storm says she's told you there was going to be a different Tony Storm, but it's the same Tony Storm, but she's bad. And we see a package on Rhea Ripley, and Rhea Ripley lost to Io Shirai, and that's what's next for Rio. We don't know. We'll find out later. But um, then we have the brand and Pete Dunne minus Pat McAfee. 
And the seeds, wow, They I, like I said, they planted them from day one. Dunn is staring down the other two guys. I think they interrupted him a little. They cut him off a little bit. The KO show with Leon Ruff is a... Uh, this is a highlight of the show. Yeah, I'm going to rewatch that ladder match, actually, but uh, later on. But KO, he broke every fourth wall, and normally I'd say, what the hell, what are you doing? But someone had to address the fact that these segments are always exactly the same. And his, uh, his own dialogue to himself about the chairs and who needs one, who doesn't, and what's going to happen, and all oh, right, someone else is going to come out now, and if only we had a commissioner, that was probably the line that was too far when he said, if only there was a Teddy Long-like character, if there is a line. This is the only time I'm going to, this is me trying to fix what I said I would do originally with this podcast, is give you some kind of common sense, middle of the road ground between old school traditional wrestling and what works versus things have changed and we got to adapt. So it's, uh, okay, what would a guy like Jim Cornette say? What would a guy like uh, Conrad Thompson say? When, you know, all the AEW fans, what would they say? And uh, and find the, the common sense line in the middle. What would a guy like JR say? And then well, what would a guy like Bruce say? And defend this and this, you know. Um, I'm going to defend Kevin Owens for 80% of this segment. Saying a commissioner is about to come out and make a certain match, it was kind of maybe a little too much. But yeah, he he did need to address, yes, we all know exactly what's going to happen because it happens every time. And we're insulting the audience's intelligence but pretending it doesn't. So I enjoyed it, and he made a predictable, what otherwise would have been really boring, plotting, long segment, long and boring. He made it uh, enjoyable. So that was good. I enjoyed it. He's very good at this. Um, he does have to be careful that he doesn't uh, only get himself over on commentary. But on commentary, he didn't really do that. He was himself, but I would imagine he'd have the sense, like, let's say he retires in four or five, three, four years. I don't know. Five years, we'll just say. Um, I have no idea what his condition is or what he wants to do. But let's say he retires. Okay. He, can, he has enough knowledge and common sense to take his part out of it. Look at Wade Barrett. Um, I'm sure KO would know to do the same thing. And Regal saying, uh, William Regal saying play, it was fun. Why not? Why not? We had fun with it. God forbid we had some fun on the wrestling show. Finn Balor says he is a cat. And uh, Sloppy Blackheart quotes Conan the Barbarian. But she changed women to crowd. And um, they play the Black Sabbath, uh, War Pigs underneath her. And I just don't believe her. She is she's that girl like who jumps into the mosh pit but tries too hard, like it's too much of a spectacle. Like, you know, the cool chick who who tries like who like purposely like burps in front of the guys and makes sure everyone notices that she's cool. Like uh sorry gremlins too, it's not happening. Not happening for me. <laughs> uh boy, the Hulu edition has had one match so far. Um Rhea Ripley has a microphone and she is Australian. And uh, Candace interrupts her, and Candace, oh, Candace, you were, you're all over this show, and that's okay. She was good in this, but man, she used one of these cliches that I hate. She said something about, "You can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk?" Oh, who the fuck wrote that? Slap somebody in the face with a wet fish. Whoever wrote that or told her to say that, or if she was, she said that on her own. Why don't you say the dreams will become nightmares? Why don't you say they bit off more than you could chew? Just go through all of them. Jeez, that sucks. I was taken out of it. Don't ever say that again. What's the matter with you? Uh, does Rhea Ripley not have friends? Because holy crap, they beat her up for five minutes and no one came out. What happened? And uh, they dragged out a lifeless Io Shirai, but okay, but no one in the locker room? Nobody? What happened to, uh, what happened? Oh, I guess Ember Moon was already beat up. Yeah, still, you think there'll be somebody. I don't get it. What about Sloppy Blackheart? She's in the back making tanks to Black Sabbath and howling, barking at the moon. That was an Aussie reference, close enough. But yeah, uh, Sloppy Blackheart doesn't come out to help Rhea Ripley? What the hell? Candace LeRae is back. She's in a parking lot. And there's another scream face. So we see another scream face, which they can't say scream. 
next to Indy Hartwell, which changes everything. So so now who's this other scream face, which I think we're going to clearly find out was Pat McAfee. Kyle and Dunn have a match, and there's a ladder there, and um, the scream guy, who I'm assuming is Pat McAfee or later to be revealed as such, will um, will run out. He ran out and tipped the ladder, and it, these two beat the hell out of each other. I love, It was really impressive was seeing the suplex over the ropes to the ladder that was bridged between the barricade and the ring apron, which is the hardest part of the ring. And there's really not much to say. I mean, they fought hard I, and beat the hell out of each other, and they did cool stuff that, you know, little twists on it, like uh, Dunn climbs up the ladder and Kyle grabs the ankle lock. Uh, cool, you know, and Dunn goes to the fingers and the hands, and then Kyle is trouble grabbing stuff. Grab a setting up the ladder. So those were nice little touches. Um, ladder matches have still been done to death. It's hard when they're not for a title or at least the Money in the Bank briefcase. Maybe we can, maybe we can give them a rest. It's especially weird when it's not for a title or Money in the Bank because we're just fighting for a briefcase, which represents that the heels will go first. They'll have the advantage in war games, which they have had in a hundred percent of all war games history. Uh, so someone's going to tell me there was one where the baby faces won the stupid coin toss. I don't, I can't think of one. So, okay. Um, but this was, uh, this was good though to show Kyle O'Reilly competitive and kicking ass and all that. And I love Pete Dunn. Uh, KO had a great line that Pete Dunn didn't get a chance to take off his furry thing. Uh, this match gets, uh, it gets 488 stars. I think the Hulu edition had two matches. There's a ladder. There was Candace and Ember up top. Let me see what else there was. Yeah, yeah, the Hulu edition had no matches. So, um, I'd like to see what else was going on. I saw Kevin Owens share a, a short clip of him saying some goofy things with Dakota Kai and her hands over her face or something. So, uh, oh, I'd like to know more. Unfortunately, this was a, a promo galore, uh, just angled out to the Gills NXT Hulu version which isn't the end of the world, I think. So I guess in a week and a half, they got their war games, and that's always a good time. And that's a hard one, too, because there's no titles on the line, so what do we sell? Because Finn's not defending his thing, and it doesn't look like Io Shirai is going to defend her thing. It looks like Ripley and Tony Storm, which would be the only good contenders, are going to be tied up in war games, too. So, Oh, the North American titles. Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. And unfortunately, the North American title is being held by Leon Ruff, who is not presented as a serious champion. So, And somehow Leon's going to keep the thing because that's th triple threat and four-way matches champions just tend to retain. But who the hell knows, honestly. Uh, I'd say just go back with Priest. Just the hell with it. Just have, a, have one solid male champion we can just kind of cheer for. Who can talk. So that would be a way to go. So I really have no idea what to say about this show. I uh, watched... Uh, it was angles and promos galore, and um, maybe we need it, and maybe we don't. I'm sure there were at least two matches that were taken off for Hulu, but either way, um, one thing I did notice was that things would get most dangerous when you tumble off the ladder, over the top rope, and you crash onto the hardest part of the ring. <laughs>